Hey, hey, everybody. It is Kelly Nielsen here, the grief guru. And on this channel, we talk about all things related to grief. What does it look like? What does it feel like? But most importantly, we share tips, tools, and resources on how to move through grief and get back to living a life that you love. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about birthdays and anniversaries, how to handle those dates that are bound to come around year after year. And what do you do with it? Today actually happens to be my son Quentin's birthday. October 21st is the day he was born in 1997. So today, if he were still here with us, he would have been 24 years old. And I got to tell you today, I feel great. I feel so excited to remember him and celebrate him and share memories and stories with families and friends. But it didn't always start out that way. In fact, I remember specifically the second birthday after he passed away, I woke up that morning and I started crying and I didn't stop for the entire day. So that's the first bit of advice that I want to give to you and for you is understand that these dates, these anniversaries and birthdays may change over time. In fact, it most likely will change over time. If you're engaging with your grief, if you're actively going through the mourning process, it is going to change over time. And some years may be harder than others. And so the first thing to know is that no matter how hard the current year is or the year prior, it may be completely different the next year. So I want to encourage you to keep your mind open that it doesn't have to be a heavy or hard day. I think a lot of times we can brace for the worst and think it's going to be bad and actually cause it to be more upsetting or emotional than it would have been normally. So I want to just encourage you to have an open mind. I always, when it comes to these days that I, you know, recognize could be challenging for me. I keep my calendar really loose that day. I just give myself permission and grace to let the day be whatever it's going to be. I'm always careful not to schedule too many appointments or hard, you know, hard line meetings that have to happen that day. I want to be able to do what I feel like doing when I wake up that day. So it could be a day like today where I feel really great. And I'm planning some things for later this afternoon and to get together with some friends and I'm confident Um, I'll be able to do that and enjoy myself. But if it was a hard day for me, I want to give myself room and permission to be able to do that. So that's the first tip is to hold the day loosely. Don't plan a lot of activities. And if you do plan activities, in fact, I had a couple of meetings for today and I let people know ahead of time, like, hey, we're going to schedule this meeting, but this is my son's birthday and I'm not sure how I'm going to feel that day. So can we just be flexible with the day or with the meeting? That's the next tip I have for you is to let others know what you need from them. So if you do have meetings coming up or you have commitments, just let people know, you know, the significance of the day for you. Most people want to support you. They just don't know how. And for most people, they probably aren't aware that it's, you know, a person, your loved one's birthday and that it may be a tough day. So be the best advocate for yourself. Just let people know um, what's going on in the day. And also let people know how they can best support you during that day. If you want to talk about the person, you know, initiate conversations, things like that. If you want to go out and have a meal, but think for yourself either beforehand or on the day of like, what sounds good to you that day? What is the best way that you can honor and celebrate and remember the person you lost and take care of yourself emotionally and physically? If it's a tough day for you, maybe that looks like, watching some movies and just sticking close to home and just doing really great things for self-care. If it's a lighter day and if you're feeling how I'm feeling today, it might involve, you know, getting together with family members and sharing stories and reminiscing and celebrating the person that you love, but let others know what they can do to support you on this day. Now, I know that Um, birthdays for me personally, birthdays are a bit different than the anniversary of his passing. And I know that this is different for everybody. Um, everybody handles things differently, but kind of for me and my grief journey and grief recovery journey, I've just made the decision that on his birthday, I'm going to remember and celebrate him. And on the anniversary of his passing, that's a day that I just choose not to really, acknowledges too strong of a word, but that's not a day that I'm going to focus on. I much would, I would much rather remember how he came into this world, um, than the day that he left this world. And so 
And even in making that decision, I think that's part of the reason why I feel the way that I do today. Today, I'm just remembering, you know, the pain, the pain of him being born and the memories of him as a child and all the birthday celebrations that we did have together. And I'm just incredibly grateful for the time that I did have with him. So I want to encourage you that if holidays and anniversaries have been hard up until now, just keep at it, keep working through your stuff. You can and will get to a place where you actually will look forward to birthdays, where they can be a sweet time of remembrance and celebration. Certainly for more tips and tools and, and all other things, subscribe to our channel and click below for details about our Grief Relief Nation community. As always, I'm cheering you on every step of the way. Until next time.